Hamas clearly has had time to dig in, to prepare. They have fortified tunnels throughout the Gaza Strip. These are going to be very difficult operations. Republican Dan Sullivan is the junior United States senator from Alaska. We've all watched with intense horror and emotion hundreds killed in conflict in a war between Israel and Hamas that has spanned more than a week and shows no sign of ending. President Biden has been clear on the side the United States of America comes down on. In this moment, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. And we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. He has also been clear in recent days that the actions of Hamas do not represent all of the Palestinian people. Still, our elected leaders watch and are stunned by the death and destruction left behind. They purposely focused on killing as many civilians as possible. Republican Dan Sullivan is in his second term as the junior United States senator from Alaska. The feelings of anger, outrage, shock, grief that we are feeling as Americans, that this is our most important ally, certainly in the Middle East, one of our most important allies in the world. And it's important to remember, we share their values. We are connected to them in many, many ways. And to witness that, I think... First and foremost, we need to stand with Israel and provide as much military and intelligence support as possible as they undertake this very dangerous but needed military operation to wipe out Hamas. But, you know, when I talk about the Middle East and, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time out there as a senator and a former Bush administration official and as a U.S. Marine The one thing I always like to mention is that the lens in which we need to view almost all of the terrorist activity occurring there is through the lens of the malign activities and influence of Iran. As you know, they fully fund and train Hamas, and they have been focused on killing Americans and Israelis for decades. So... I'm hopeful that the Biden administration is going to wake up, recognize that their appeasement policies with regard to Iran have to stop and reimpose the very comprehensive sanctions that the Trump administration had placed on the Iranian regime and the Iranian economy. And I think that's in some ways the most important way in which to deter a broadening of this conflict throughout the Middle East. You you talked about Iran, and on Sunday, your Senate colleague, uh, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, uh, talked about uh, a uh, trip with senators over to uh, the region to negotiate or to perhaps broker a peace between Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia. And in that, he issued a warning to Iran, saying essentially— do not push Hamas further into this conflict. And uh, it goes along with what you're saying is there needs to be a strong stand taken against Iran in this case. Well, I fully agree with um, Senator Graham's sentiment on this. Iran has been the focus of almost all the terrorism in in the region. And what they are going to be trying to do in terms of possibly widening this war We need to send an unequivocal message that they shouldn't be doing it. But let me give you one area, Grinnell, that I think we should all focus on as senators, as uh, federal officials, both in the executive and legislative branch, and it's regarding energy. This administration has come into office and literally shut down one of our great strengths, which is American energy. You literally have a Biden administration undertaking what I refer to as a policy of national security suicide. What we need to do, particularly with regard to energy, is recognize it as a huge American strategic advantage and produce our own energy and shut down the production of energy in terrorist states like Iran 
in Venezuela who use it for malign influences, and in the case of Iran, for killing Israelis and Americans. And I, I will circle back to that in a, in a second, but I have a few other things I, I want to get to with you uh, in the sense of uh, with the, uh, the Israeli-Hamas conflict, we have strike groups there ready uh, and, and waiting for orders. How ready should America be to step into this? Well, look, in terms of what's going to happen in Gaza, I think a couple things. A, this is uh, going to be very difficult and bloody. Hamas clearly has had time to dig in, to prepare. They have fortified tunnels throughout the Gaza Strip. These are going to be very difficult operations. We need to support, um, as I mentioned, through military aid and intelligence, the IDF as it's going through this. And here's the other thing that I think is important. Our military like the Israeli military, seeks to avoid civilian casualties in its operations. The groups, in particular Hamas or Hezbollah, uh, that the Israelis are focused on right now, Hamas and the Gaza Strip, they do the opposite. So that is going to be a much more challenging situation. It's also important to remember that um, they're likely, uh, we don't have an exact number, but American hostages right now. And from my perspective, uh, I certainly hope that the president and the Department of Defense have our top military teams, whether it's Delta Force or SEAL Team 6, to be able to um, rescue American citizens. So that's going to be an important component of that. The broader element of what we can do at this moment, in addition to supplying military equipment and intelligence, is making sure we have the forces in the region that provide a deterrent effect to Iran from broadening this conflict. And that's why I am supportive of the carrier strike groups that are in the region, the Marine Expeditionary Unit. And I think right now that's going to be a critical component of deterrence. And um, that's going to be happening literally as we speak right now. You just spoke of uh, making sure there is aid available for the Israelis to defend themselves. And uh, your chamber's leader, Chuck Schumer, uh, is uh, in Tel Aviv, and he uh, talked about the Senate doing everything it can to put together a significant package uh, to help Israel defend itself. Now, that brings in that murky problem of the United States House, which is in a bit of disarray at this moment with no speaker. Let me ask you as a senator, how frustrating is that to look at this, knowing that we need to do or the U.S. needs to do as much as it can for Israel, but it's kind of hamstrung by a house with no speaker, which can't do business right now. Is that frustrating for you? Yes, it's frustrating. And look, I'm a U.S. senator. I'm a U.S. Marine. I'm like a lot of my colleagues uh, in the Senate. I've never served in the House. So um, sometimes I'm puzzled by what's happening there, where you have so-called conservative members of the House aligning themselves with all the Democrats in the House to take down Speaker McCarthy, and they're calling that conservative. They align with the AOC and some of the biggest liberals in the House of Representatives to take out the Republican leader of the House. How that is conservative, I'll never understand. But I'm hopeful that these big challenges that we're seeing, and by the way, it's it's the Middle East, but it's in Ukraine. It's an area that I focus a lot on, which is Taiwan, the Taiwan Strait, the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, Grinnell, we're seeing uh, what is almost certainly one of the most dangerous periods since World War II around the world. And uh, we need, as the Congress, to step up and demand that the Biden administration um, reverse so many of its policies that have undermined U.S. strengths. Um, I talked about energy. Uh, I talked about um, our military. As you know, the Biden administration has put forward military budgets to shrink the military. Every budget that this president put forward has been a cut 
this current budget of the president um, shrinks the Army, shrinks the Navy, shrinks the Marine Corps. Uh, they've undertaken, as I mentioned, an appeasement policy with Iran. What we need is Congress speaking with strong voices to reverse these policies and bolster our national defense. You know, providing for the defense of our nation is probably the most important constitutional requirement and responsibility the United States Congress has. So I'm hopeful that given all of these circumstances, that it's going to motivate our House members to work together to elect a speaker. I know Jim Jordan quite well. I was going to, I was going to ask you, is, is Jim Jordan that voice? Well, I think it's, it's obviously up to the House. Um, I think he'd make a fine speaker. And so, but what we need are members of the House to um, bring him to that position soon. You did talk earlier about uh, energy independence, and, and a lot of us here in the lower 48 don't technically see a whole bunch of what goes on in your home state of Alaska. And you mentioned fossil fuels are, are, are abundant there. With the energy policy and the direction of energy that the country appears to be going, what do you see economically affecting people in your home state? Well, as I mentioned, one of our great strengths is our natural resources. We made enormous progress on many important resource development projects in Alaska, on critical minerals, on oil and gas during the Trump administration. The Biden administration has come in and essentially tried to reverse almost every single one of these. And to your point, that um, hurts jobs in my state. It also doesn't do anything for the environment because Alaska has the highest environmental standards on the production of natural resources and the development of natural resources of any place in the world, right? If you're not producing oil and gas in Alaska with the highest standards on the planet, and you're, you, but you want to get it from Venezuela, you're certainly not helping the environment globally. You're actually hurting it. And of course, it hurts my constituents directly in terms of jobs. But every American citizen should be concerned when Alaska, with its high standards on the environment, can't produce energy for America and the world. And I'm certainly hopeful that we're going to finally, once again, reimpose massive sanctions on Iran and unleash the huge potential of American energy, which is not just good for jobs and good for our economy. It is an enormous element of American strength and power. All issues at home and abroad we are watching. Senator Dan Sullivan, a Republican from Alaska, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate talking to you. Okay, Grinnell, thanks. Keep up the great work and appreciate the opportunity to be on the show.